Oh, good morning, everybody. So today will be the last class on the for mindfulness. So before the class, I will say a few things because <clears throat> the class uh, name we named Understanding Buddhism Through Meditation. Right? This is the kind of topic. So in order to know what does mean Buddhism, what does mean Buddhist? So important one, so we have to experience a Dharma through meditation. If we don't do any kinds of meditation, then actually we're not going to experience the actual Dharma. Also, we're not going to change our life. We're not going to transform our life. Particularly, we're not going to break and break down or you know, cut the, the origin of suffering. For example, there are so many <clears throat> people who are your friends, who are Hindu, who are Muslim, who are Christian, who are like follow the Taos. Everybody does daily prayers, chanting, recitation, prostration, you know, making offering. This thing is a common Buddhist and the you know, non-Buddhists who are believer. So based on research and chanting, we cannot really differentiate Buddhist and non-Buddhist. Also daily praying to like a God, like a Buddha, also we cannot differentiate. I'm Buddhist because I pray to certain thing. He or she is not Buddhist. He or she does pray to, you know, something else. Also believe in previous life, next life. Also we cannot differentiate. Because all the Hindu also believe in previous life, next life, karma, suffering, liberation. Also we cannot differentiate. So then how we can say I am Buddhist? How we can differentiate or oh, this person is Buddhist, those person are non-Buddhist. The fundamental different, differentiation is based on the four noble truths. If you do daily, you know, practice of four noble truth, then you can say this person is Buddhist because this person practice the four noble truths. Or this person are believer, still non-Buddhist because they don't practice the four noble truths. Right? So in order to understand the four noble truths, first we need to know the true truth, the true reality, which is the conventional truth and ultimate truth. This means true truths. The true truths is not really, you know, created by Buddha through his study for many years, then he relies in the reality there are two truths. Means conventional truths. For example, you know, things, the trees, flower, you know, fruits, things are growing. Also things are, you know, you know, degenerates. And also you can see the, the weather is changing. There's a sun and moon. All the things have been around us named conventional truth. 
you can say, you know, relative truth depends on many causes and condition, but it has a different function, right? Function truth. Then when you analyze, when we analyze, for example, a flower. So when we analyze about the flower, first we can say this is a flower. When you look very closely to the flower, then if you think actually which one is really flower, the stem, the leaf, or the patterns, the color, the shape. Yes, none of them can be a flower. Do more study closely about the flower, then finally you will realize, yes, the things, the things appear to me as a flower. Actually, the flower is not really there as an independent flower. Then when the flower, the nature of flower is, you know, empty. The nature of flower is just there, depends on many causes and conditions. It is impossible to exist the flower independently. Now you can see there's a two types of reality. One is the conventional and relevant truth. One is the ultimate mean. The final nature of the flower is the emptiness, the true truth. The best on the two truths, then there's a possibility of the four novel truths. But that means cause and effect are conventional truth. The cause and effects are totally you know, empty of independent existence, the conventional truth. Therefore, generally there's a cause and effect, right? Cause and effect. The cause and effect is always there, it's not really you know, created by like powerful person, like a God, like a Buddha, is there, naturally there. So when we study about cause and effect, certain cause give us, brings happiness for us. Certain cause and condition bring, you know, suffering for us. That means the cause which is you know, give rise suffering is the cause of the suffering. The cause which is give, which is give rise happiness this is the cause of happiness generally. This means there's a positive cause, generally, relatively, you can say a positive cause produce positive result. Is correct. Then the negative cause produce the negative result. Right, is the truth. Then when we analyze ourselves, what I need in my life, what I need in this life, whether you are Buddhist, non-Buddhist, whether you know the being is a human being or simple sentient beings, everybody wants happiness, don't want suffering, right? Don't want suffering. It's also, naturally, they have a, this kind of feeling. Then if we don't want suffering, how we can eliminate the suffering? If we want, if we always want happiness, how we can achieve happiness? Now here are a lot of confusion. This point, I want happiness, I don't want suffering. So therefore I want happiness, General people does so many things in life, just bring happiness for temporarily, like uh, doing yoga, going gyms, running, you know, eating healthy food, you know, taking a kind of long holiday. This also kind of methods giving or bring you happiness. Also, more little bit more, let's say, wise person does same thing, yoga, exercise, then so then they thought, oh, if I do a lot of recitation, chanting, 
pray to Buddha, then I can be very happy. This is serious mistake. We must need to do prayer and chanting. Those are not the actual, you know, ultimate, ultimate sources to bring happiness. And I don't want suffering. I want to reduce the, you know, cause of suffering. Then what we do? Also, same thing, we do so many things. All the things, in a way, kind of methods, kinds of condition can be reduced suffering, but not able to reduce the suffering from the root. Right? Therefore, I don't want suffering. I want to burn pure land. I want to go Buddha land. So do a lot of recitation, chanting, you know, every year visiting holy place. This also is kind of uh, uh, methods to reduce suffering, achieving happiness, not the ultimate. Therefore, we, when you study closely, then you can find there's a four noble truth, right? Like the origin of suffering and suffering. Suffering, the origin of suffering, because right now we are studying about uh, meditation on object of the mind, right? Suffering is not there as a independently. There's a suffering means there must be a cause and condition of suffering. Therefore, suffering is the result. The origin of suffering is the cause. Then, if we don't want suffering, what we need to do? We need to eliminate the suffering, right? We need to eliminate, we need to purify all types of suffering. How? So we need to eliminate the root of the suffering, right? For example, you are, you know, sleeping or stay under the tree, under the, the poison tree. Then you feel, you know, I'm very unhealthy. I always have skin problem, this problem, that problem. Then you realize, yes, I have this problem because of the tree, right, tree. So this way you chop up the tree, all the branches. For the short time you feel better because the tree cannot produce a lot of poison. After a few days, few months, few years, the tree grows again. Producing, you know, re release all the poison. Also you can see, again you chop up the branches. Then here, if I ask question, are you smart, enough smart? No, you are just cutting the, you know, chopping the branches, not the, the root. This is practical. Right? Therefore, if you don't want suffering, we need to analyze what are the cause of suffering. If you allow, able to control the cause of the root of suffering, suffering is going to be disappeared. Is very practical. Therefore, based on the two truths, then there's a four noble truths. Right? Four noble truths, which is truth of suffering, the truth of origin of suffering, the truth of cessation, the truth of the path to leading to the cessation. Four noble truths. Based on the you know understanding, having the you know good understanding of four noble truths then you can believe into Tirbal Jain, like Buddha, Dharma, Sangha. Because in order to practice the Four Noble Truth, in order to realize the actual truth, we need a qualified person. You know, very skillful, very, you know, kind of, you know, wise person, which is Buddha, right? Buddha Shakyamuni. Therefore, if you think I don't want suffering, second, you need to think who can teach me how to eliminate suffering? Therefore, Buddha. Buddha. Therefore, we take refuge to the Buddha as a excellent, perfect teacher. Right? Then why Buddha can be excellent and perfect teacher? Why? What reason? You should not say Buddha looks so beautiful. Buddha has a, you know, lots of power. You should not say 
Buddha Shakyamuni himself, you know, let's say millions of years, years ago, he was same as us. He has used to have a lot of problem, a lot of suffering. Even though when he was born, you know, you know, during the his lifetime, he has a lot of problem with the family problem, problem with his brother or problem with his father, family problems. Also, he got married, and we should not say that you know relationship problem. Also, he feel it's not the right to do live in a have a married life. So he was searching how I can achieve happiness, how I can be happy all the time. So through his study, through his research, then he found, right, oh, this is the root. This is the root of suffering. I need to eliminate. How I can eliminate? Then he did, you know, seven, uh, six years, serious meditation, serious practice, the path to leading to the cessation. And then one day, he able to eliminate the root of the cause and the suffering of the cause. Sorry, the so cause of suffering and the suffering. Then one day, who fully, you know, become enlightened person. Mean he fully understood. Then he taught us the teaching based on his own experience. Not like me, I just teaching you, you know, looking at this book, I just teaching, I'm copying from the master and pass to you, not through my own experience. So yes, <clears throat> all the Buddhas, for example, Buddha Shakyamuni, is the excellent teacher because he himself achieved the enlightened state through practice of the path, through realize the or suffering and the origin of suffering. Therefore, we can say, yes, Buddha is the excellent teacher, right? Therefore, since today, I need to rely on the Buddha, which is he always be my teacher who always be my guide he guides you all lifetime until we buddha then why we need to rely on the dharma because buddha can teach buddha can tell us you know what are the suffering what are the original suffering buddha can teach you how to free from suffering yes right buddha can teach exactly buddha can definitely take and teach but whether you are free from suffering or not, it depends on whom. It depends on us. Exactly us, no doubt. For example, when I have a serious illness, first I need to realize I have a serious illness. Second, maybe you will understand, you will realize, oh, I have a serious illness because of that. For example, if you eat, you know, poison food, while you are eating, you are very much enjoying. The food is very nice. Wow, very tasty, very nice, very cheap. You are really enjoying eating the poison food. But problem here, you know, we don't realize the food was poison. Then after a few days, a few months, then you're sick. Right, sick. Yes, then you know, yes, I'm sick because of the poison food. Then what you need to do? We need to see a doctor. First, we try to heal ourselves. Okay, definitely any problem, physical problem you, when you have, you should not immediately see doctor. You should not immediately take a medicine. Try to heal ourselves. Do, you know, certain exercise, certain yoga, change your, you know, eating style, you know. Then you can heal yourself. At the end, if you know you cannot heal, you see doctor. After seeing doctor, still what you need to do? we need to take the medicine on the right time, how the doctor prescription, according to prescription. Therefore, second, you know, taking refuge, refuge to the Dharma, I mean, after you meet the uh, Buddha, receive all the instruction, second, you seriously need to practice. Am I right? You seriously need to take the medicine, one before, you know, breakfast, after breakfast, before lunch, after lunch, dinner, you know, empty stomach, whatever doctor explained, we must follow his advice. Then we can be free from the sickness. 
But whenever we go to see doctor, we never, we're not going to see a doctor all the time. Mostly we see whom? Nurses. The nurse is always there. The doctor is not, you know, you know, doctor never come all the time. The nurse is, nurse is always there. Second, we need to rely on the nurse. Otherwise, the doctor says so many things, give a prescription, then we come back home, we forgot. We confuse. Then we call the doctor. Doctor is not available. Then we call the nurses. All the nurses are available. Then third, we need a nurse. Likewise, after when you are seriously practicing dharma, third, we need you know we need to take refuge to the sangha. Therefore, you can see if you really understood the form of the truth, then definitely you have to. You need to rely on the Tirbal gem, right? Tirbal gem. Among the four noble truth, the origin of suffering is look like the poison food. The poison food. I mean, food is look very delicious, very nice. But after eating the food, the poison slowly spread our body, then when it gets, gets sick. Then uh, the suffering is look like the sickness after eating the poison food. Then the cessation of the path is look like taking medicine, eating medicine, doing exercise and yoga so and so. It's like a dharma, dharma like taking medicine. Then the cessation is like, you know, after you fully recover the sickness, then you have a sense of happiness, sense of joy. You like the cessation is not fully recover from the sickness. For example, due to you know, a certain reason, you get so angry. Right? You get strong angry. You, you got a very strong anger. You feel so angry. That moment, you feel you are very disturbed, right? Other people can see, how come my friend is today not happy? The unhappiness caused by what? Anger, right? Anger. Anger caused being unhappiness. Then immediately, you know, you are very lucky. You remember, practice the Dharma. What Dharma? What, what kind of dharma you need to practice to control the anger? Then here do, you know, same mistake. Suddenly you can, you recite mantra, chanting, so and so. For the time being, you feel good. Because you, uh, you say, drivers your thoughts. After you stop recitation, the anger is there. That anger is there. This means all our daily practice have been doing is just, you know, divers your thoughts. You are not really actually fighting directly to the anger. You are not, you know, applying a right antidote to control the anger. Am I right? Anger. Then what is the right antidote? Control the anger, minimize the anger. Eliminate the anger, compassion, forbearance are the right path to control. Then you suddenly you generate compassion to the person. One day, two days, three days, one week, one year. After one year, you realize you don't have a really angry anger towards the person, towards your enemy. You feel happy. Now you can see the happiness you have to achieve through meditation, through practicing, through, you know, practicing compassion. And there, even though there's some anger, you can see origin of the suffering and suffering and the cessation, how to the cessation, right? Anger is the origin of suffering. Then unhappiness is the, you know, uh, uh, truth of suffering. The compassion is the path to leading to seize the anger. When the anger is fully under control, then there's a happiness, right? 
Therefore, each of the negative thoughts you can, you know, uh, uh, what you, call, you can relate with the four noble truths. So today, we short time we study about the origin of suffering, then cessation, and part of the cessation. Then uh, the uh, point number nineteen. And what man is the truth of the origin of suffering? It is that craving, which is give rise to the rebirth, bound with the pleasure, lust, rendering fresh delight. Now here, now that, that is to say, sensual craving, craving for example, and craving for non-existent, existent or existent, right? That means, what are the origin of suffering? The answer is craving, craving. Yeah, so why craving is the, you know, the most serious cause to bring suffering? Simple. For example, we, we everybody commonly have a, let's say, very strong craving to eat food, you know, particular food. Any kinds of food, somehow, somehow you have a craving. So the food is oily, or the food has a lot of, you know, food, lot of ingredients, which is very, very unhealthy. But we don't care, right? What kind of, for example, of, uh, of the hot pot, right? Hot pot is very common food people like to eat. Let's go for hot pot, right? Hot, uh, hot pot. When you really going to study what, what kinds of ingredients there are, most of them very unhealthy. Even though after you eating the hot pot, not you feel very heaty, feel so thirsty. Why? After you eating, you know, the pure veggie food, not the, without the mock meat, mock meat, the fake meat, okay, mock meat. After you, you never feel, you know, it's heady, you never feel thirsty, you're okay. That means, you know, the uh, food on a hot pot, things, something not correct. So somehow you have a strong craving, you have been eating the food for many years. The one day you realize you are very unhealthy. Somehow you are, you know, become oversized or you have a diabetes, you have a sugar problem. So many problems already there because the hot pot. So you have been eating the hot pot because you, you never can do the craving about eating hot pot. But any problems we have is actually mostly the craving. Craving. So as a lay person, Someday you are, you know, like relationship is very healthy, someday it's very unhealthy. When the craving is that's why the relationship is very unhealthy. When the craving is, you know, distress why, then the craving change the object. Then the problem they are craving, right? It's craving. Then attachment, the anger, right? attachment, the craving, anger, everything caused by ignorance right therefore if you if you don't want suffering we need to control craving attachment desire ignorance the origin of suffering is a craving the craving also not necessarily to be you know craving for something not good also attachment, all attachment, not necessarily to attach towards something not actually good. As a Buddhist, so many people have a strong attachment towards your own guru. Attachment, not pure fact. Yes, the guru is good, but 
instead of you are generating pure faith and belief in your trust, your guru, you are generating attachment. This is my guru, right? Since you have a strong attachment towards your, your guru, there's a no way you can see, you know, certain problem, faulty thing towards your guru. Your guru is always look like a like pure gem. Somebody says, hey, I don't think your guru is the right guru because he or she is doing something wrong. You are not ready to accept. Right? Therefore, attachment, not necessarily towards, attachment towards the bad thing. So we have to be very careful. Craving is the origin of suffering. The, then explain here very detailedly, craving towards eyes, north, tongue, body, an object is very common because many people say, oh, I really like this person because he or she has a beautiful eyes, craving. Oh, physically she's not that nice, but her, she has a, such a beautiful nose, beautiful smile, beautiful gesture, right? This is the, you know, uh, craving is the cause to bring suffering. Then, then slowly, not on the on the uh, five uh, sense, then the five object. We very much like a form, sound, you know, fragrance, taste, so and so. Here, you yes, say, what are the, if somebody asks, what is the cause of origin of suffering? What is the origin of suffering? Craving. Craving, right? Yes, we everybody going to agree that craving is the origin of suffering. Then why we have a craving? Why? Why we have a craving? Because of the feeling. When you eat, you know, the hot pot food, you have a very you you yourself feel very pleasant feeling, right? Pleasant feeling. Therefore, I said in the beginning when we say I like something, mean actually you are describing your feeling. Oh, I like food court. Sorry, the hot pot mean you have a strong craving. The food court actually you have a strong craving towards the pleasant feeling, right? Then you say, oh, I don't I don't like the laksa. But I don't like, I don't like, I personally I don't like the rojak. Rojak, I don't like. When I say I don't like rojak, I mean I'm not criticizing the apple, banana. I don't criticize the food, fruits. That means after eating, I feel very unpleasant feeling. That means i rejecting the feeling. Right? That means actually I, I have a sense of hatred, sense of you know, dislike, toss the feeling. You know, you can see, you know, mindfulness of the feeling, that feeling. Then how we have this kind of concept to say, oh, this is pleasant, this is unpleasant, this is beautiful, this is ugly. Why we have this kind of concept? Why? Simply, very simple example, for example, uh, this day, you know, many people like, you know, like a ball on. Apple Watch, Series 7 and Series 8, right? So when you look at the, the size, the color, it's same. Maybe there's, inside there's a little bit different function, otherwise everything's same. Same, right? Same. But you, you never analyze. Oh, I already have a, I, you know, Apple uh, Series 7. I no need to buy it. You never analyze. If you analyze, you are very much happy with the Apple, Apple Watch Series 6. No need to buy 7. No need to buy it. Because you never analyze. Due to not analyzing, you have a total ignorance. Therefore, there's an Indian, you know, like a film or movie. And then one young man really wanted to do business. Business. Then the, uh, his uh, friends living in China. 
So he went to China, then he thought I do business in China, business in India. He, he was seeking advice from the, his friend who lived in China, in, he lived in China, his Indian man. He said, if you want to do business, just do business. You don't need to worry because all the consumer, like a customer are, there's a stupid. All the consumers are stupid. They don't know anything. You explain, they will believe they will buy. Right? Actually, you, you think I want to buy a phone. You really don't know what kind of phone you want to buy. What function must have the phone. You just go with the card and cash to the shop. Right? You ask, hey, good morning. May I have you? They say, yeah, I'm looking at a phone. They say, oh, you buy this phone. This is really good. This is good, good, good. All, everything is good, good, good. Then you thought it's good. <laughs> we are stupid. Right? Stupid. Then next, then after you bought the uh, mobile phone, you went to the next shop. They saw your new phone. Oh, where did you buy the phone? Oh, I buy it from the other shop. Oh, you la. <laughs> this phone has a lot of problems, right? Lot of problems. Because my friend bought last, last week, or my wife bought last week, it's so many problems. Then you change your mind, you return to the shop, say, okay, I want to return the phone. Because, because you have an ignorance. Right? This means craving, attachment, whatever we have, we have an ignorance. Therefore, the ignorance is look like foundation. Because based on ignorance, then the attachment, then the craving, anger, everything slowly generated based on ignorance. Right? Now here, what we need to learn we really need to learn, really need to learn to recognize the actual, what does mean ignorance. Ignorance. Many people say, I'm a very ignorant person. Many, you are saying, actually, I don't know anything, right? Many people say, I'm a very ignorant person. I don't know anything. Not knowing anything is not the ignorance. Not knowing, you know, anything. Not just not knowing is not the ignorance. Ignorance is the opposite of the real. Ignorance is the mind, which is apprehend the opposite of the reality. For example, sound is impermanent. We naturally, you know, just think the sound, things look like permanent. Things nature are empty, but for us, everything is independent. The mind which is uh, apprehend the thing as an independent existence, this uh, ignorance. Ignorance. When we have a thoughts, you know, when we have a mind to accept, to believe things are independent, then very easy to arrest all the negative thoughts, even the anger. For example, when we have a fighting with, you know, someone, we have a verbal, verbal fighting, physical fighting, mental fighting, fighting is there. When we have a fighting, immediately you realize half of the problem because of me. Right? Then almost you solve the problem. Half the problem is me. If you accept it, I also involve. Then half of the problem solved. Then how about the problem because of the person? So you cannot do much other person. Let him as it is. The most important, you should not get angry, upset, free from the, the negative thoughts. But we have a, one problem here. When we realize, yes, yesterday I have a party with, you know, verbally party with my colleague. Oh. This morning I realized because I, oh, I did a mistake. Also I did a mistake. Then you feel regret. And all your anger almost, you know, disappear. Also you realize half of the problem because of your colleague. The next morning you try to explain to the colleague, hey, I realized it will be my problem. It will be your problem. Right? The colleague is not ready to accept little bit problem is raised from him or her. Then 
against the problem. Therefore, when you realize, you know, the fighting is because of part of me, you're just happy to realize, then, you know, I don't, uh, you know, continuously carry the anger and the fighting, all the things just stop. Next morning, when you meet the friend, just say hello, good morning. Don't try to correct, don't try to explain again. It doesn't work because of the ego. Ego. Everybody has an ego. When we hurt the ego, the person feels very angry and upset. Let them realize their problem by themselves. We don't, uh, don't, don't try. Right? Therefore, ignorance is the origin of suffering and the craving so and so. Next, we learn about cessation. Right? Now, let's say we fully understood what are the suffering, what are the origin of suffering. So I don't want suffering. I want to cease. I want to stop the suffering. The how we should stop. Then here, page number 14, I think different number, three, four, seven. And what, monks, is the novel truth of cessation of the suffering, right? cessation of the suffering. It is the complete fading away and extinction of this craving. You're forsaking in a abandoning, abandonment, liberation from it. This means cessation of suffering completely fading away an extinction of this craving. No craving, no attachment, no anger, no ignorance mean then we, we achieve liberation, right? Then there's a question here again, and how does this craving come to be abandoned? How does its cessation come about? Tell me how we can eliminate, how we can stop the craving. The answer is a bit different uh, than the normal, my understanding here. Wherever in the world, there's uh, anything agreeable, pleasurable, there is cessation come about. This is a bit uh, difficult to understand, but based on this line, I will explain. For example, I say here, how does this craving come to be abandoned? How does this cessation come about? That how we can stop or abandon the craving, how we can achieve the cessation of seizing the craving. The answer is here, wherever in the world there's anything agreeable, pleasurable, there is, there is cessation come about. Mean, for example, I have a strong craving, let's say drinking coffee is my habit. So I have a strong craving drinking coffee. If I keep drinking coffee, you know, every day, four, five, six times, then there's a problem, will, must be there, will come. At the end, then I cannot sleep. I have a BP problem. I have a diabetes problem, will be there, right? Craving. Then how I must cease the craving on the coffee? Yes, I need to analyze what is the consequence it will be if I keep drinking the coffee many times? Yes, diabetes, right? Or maybe sleeping problem. You realize, after you fully realize drinking lots of coffee bring suffering, then you're going to stop drinking coffee. Right? That means the craving you cease on the coffee, I mean you should not have a craving when you look at the coffee, clear? You should not have a craving towards someone when you look at the person. 
should not have a craving. How we should stop, you know, arousing craving based on the human being, a human. It's a common, you know, as a human being, you have an attachment towards someone, you have a craving towards someone. That means you need to analyze when you have a strong craving or attachment towards someone, you need to check what kind of craving I have towards the person. I have a craving to the person. Yes, I have a craving to the person. Are you craving only about the face, all parts of body, or particular parts of body? Analyze. Then there's no any answer. There's no such answer you can answer. Say, oh, some, I like the person. For example, a uh, day before someone walk in center, a young man from China. I think he was looking, you know, the solution to solve the problem. The, I think he saw Tibetan Buddhist. He just walked in, I just chit a little bit. Then he said, uh, he said, oh, I have a anxiety. I have anxiety. It's a very common, people say, I have a problem. Then I say, yeah, you have problem. You do this, you do. It's not the right advice. It, advice cannot be effective advice. Then I ask, oh yeah, what kind of anxiety you have? What kind of anxiety? I have to go more detail. Then he say, oh, I'm here, my girlfriend in China, I'm here. I say, yeah, then why still you have a, like a, you know, anxiety? Then she, he feel the distance. They are leaving each other very far away. That she, he feels, the distance is so long. Then I said, if you truly love her, if she truly love you, the distance doesn't matter, right? You still can trust each other. Because you have an anxiety because you, I don't think you trust her. If you, the distance will close, they can check each other, right? I said, mm, maybe, I don't think you trust her. Then he said, no, 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 I really trust her. Really? He said, yes. Then I said, why you really trust her? He said, I don't know. I don't know. Right? Look at that. In a way, he really trusts, but the person does have a reason. Same way, we say, oh, I very much like this person, that person. Yes, you can say, I like. If somebody asks, why you really like the person? Why? They say, I don't know, I like, many people say simple, I don't know, I like it. I like him or like her, right? Therefore, the attachment, when the, attach, attach, when the craving need to cease, you need to analyze. I'm craving about what? The shape or the particular feature of the body. What kind of craving you have? Then you analyze, you know, the, the nature of the person body. Normally, we, when we say, I, I really like, I fall in love someone, mean, when you are talking about the physical feature, man or woman, doesn't matter. So after you analyze the actual reality of the body, there's not any small piece of body you can say, I really craving on this. Analyzing for many times, then finally you're able to overcome, you know, uh, from the craving. That means you cease the craving based on the object which is arising the craving. You, are, you have a strong craving for the food. After you analyze the food, you notice the food is very unhealthy since the craving is no more on the, on the particular food. You are saying here, wherever is the world, there's anything agreeable, pleasurable, there is cessation come about. And what is there is agreeable is a, a cessation come about, number one. Number two, little different explanation based on the Mahayan teaching. Teaching, the cessation is not, you know, really, cessation is not come on the object 
object. For example, I have attachment, then I apply the anti dots, and slowly I control the attachment. One day, the attachment ceases within the mind, within the emptiness of the mind. That means cessation must be cease, cessation must achieve within the mind. Cessation not able to achieve on the object, clear object cessation. Simply, uh, you, we're not going to, uh, you know, uh, I'm not going to all the uh, verses. The cessation of suffering, it is the complete fettering away of the extension of the craving, it is forsaking and abandonment, liberation from it, detachment from it. And how does this craving come to be abandoned? How does its cessation come about? Then the answer is there, cessation. So next we study about the path. Path. That's best number 313. What monk is the novel truth of way of practice leading to the cessation of suffering? This sentence is, I feel, uh, I think is very important. But the truth of the way, right? The way must be the correct way. What kind of way or path we are looking? Practice, pure practice. If we practice the perfect way, the way lead to the cessation of suffering, right? We need to practice the right way, right path, practice, then the right path, right practice lead to the cessation. That means, again, you know, the recitation, chanting are good, we must do in our daily life. Only recitation, chanting cannot lead us to the cessation. Only recitation, chanting things are the not way of the practice leading to the cessation of suffering. It is just this novel at four path, namely a right view, right thought, thought, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, the right concentration. These are the eight unfold area path or you know novel eightfold path. Also it's very common to practice Mahayan and Hinayan. So eightfold part are very important practice in Buddhist particularly is very very important for the beginner. Number one right view. Number two, right thought. Right thoughts. Then number two, right speech. Right action. Right livelihood. Right effort. Right mindfulness. Right concentration. Are the eight path. A novel eight for path. Namely, there's other eight. Among the eight, we study about the right view. And what monks is right view? It is monk, the knowledge of suffering. I also, I feel this sentence is very nice. Knowledge of suffering means need to know, have a right knowing, knowledge of suffering, or right view of suffering. Then the knowledge of the origin of suffering, knowledge of the cessation of, cessation of suffering, a knowledge of a way of practice leading to the cessation of suffering. This is called the right view, right, right view. Look at the right mean, the knowledge of suffering. Means we must have a good knowledge to understand the suffering. We must have a right view, the right understanding, the origin of suffering. 
then we must have a you know right knowledge, the right understanding of cessation. Cessation what? Cessation of suffering. Then the right knowledge of the way of practice leading to the cessation of suffering. There's a knowledge, the right knowledge. Therefore, as a Buddhist, we should not do practice, any kind of practice based on ignorance. We must do any practice we do in our life based on the knowledge. So many of us you know, have been studying practice Dharma for many years, right? Many years. If you compare, you know, first year and this year and your experience of Dharma, you compare how was you, you are look like five years ago, how was, you know, how you, you are look like now. If you compare knowledge wise, definitely you have a better knowledge, better understanding, but not better practice. Practice, right? Practice. Why we don't have, yes, we have a lot of, you know, compared with five years and this year, I can feel I know a lot of Dharma. I know a lot of about how to practice, right? But if you compare your practice experience, transformation, changing, instead of you are becoming better, maybe you become more worse. Instead of becoming, you know, open mind, easy person, maybe you become more close-minded, more difficult person. Because we don't have a, the right knowledge plus the right practice. Therefore, we, we cannot see. Yes, I've been in, you know, TBC almost eight years. Within the eight years, I always observe, you know, the person who, you know, come to TBC to attend my teaching, attend other person, you know, master teaching. I can see that their knowledge is getting, you know, they got more knowledge, getting more knowledge, understanding more. But I cannot see any of them really change, transform, becoming more easy. I can see in becoming, instead of becoming easy person, become more difficult person. Because we've been practicing Dharma for many years, but we still live as a, you know, ordinary Singaporean. Ordinary Singaporean means I'm not saying ordinary, not bad. Little thing, you feel very happy. With a little thing, you feel very upset. The matter is very simple, but you are giving a lot of explanation. Right. For example, you went to the restaurant, you order a food. The food is not exactly as you are craving. Now you are discussing all the time about, oh, this food, this, this, this. Then after you're paying bill, also you're giving explanation. Oh, you should, you should not add this too much. You add a little bit more. It's very simple. If you like, you eat. If you don't like, just leave and go away. <laughs> right? Throw the, your chair and cup in the, the collect area. Just go away. Don't think too much. Therefore, the more you study Dharma, the more, the more you gain knowledge, the more you have to be easy, open mind, very easy to let it go. But still you are living in a very, you know, ordinary sense of look at. I went for the, uh, India for six months. You can see all the mark. Pink mark, yellow mark, writing name, all the such has a name. The, the such, like such. Very simple, just on and off, test which one is which like. Test, no need this thing. <laughs> all, all the cover, they put the name of, should not open, close properly. Oh, yeah, we are not a child. Right? <laughs> Therefore, this thing, we have to be very easy. Something happened, very easy to learn, let it go. Right. Also, you are, and also look like, you know, quite easy to be friend, very quick, very easy to be, become enemy each other. Right. You should not be like that. Right. Therefore, here, 
knowledge knowledge of suffering knowledge of origin of suffering knowledge of the cessation of suffering the knowledge of the way of practicing practice leading to the cessation of suffering that means right view as a buddhist we need a right view right again right view we always judge other this person good that person no good this thing good this thing no good we never judge ourselves right? we never judge first we must judge ourselves am i a good person if i be honest person or not first you check yourself then say, second you can point your finger towards other this are the right view the right thoughts or right thought the thought of renunciation the thought of non ill will the thought of harmless this monk is called right thought number one the right what right thought of renunciation second is the right thought of ill will non ill will the thought of harmlessness mean first we must have a proper renunciation renunciation doesn't mean we don't need anything we must need we, we must need house we must need food drink you know like clothes money so we need everything in order to survive right survive but we should not have a strong craving attachment towards them renounce mean i that's been simple you can say i want to you know free from the samsara definitely i want to free from cause of samsara mean i want to free from craving attachment the right you know uh, thoughts of the thoughts of renunciation then thoughts of non ill will therefore non uh, ill will is one of the serious mind to making problem within the family friends coworker you know and the neighbors then thoughts of harmlessness these are the right thought then third one the right speech right speech refraining from lying refraining from slander slander refraining from harsh speech refraining from frivolous speech i think gossip thing this is called call the right speech right the right speech first one refraining from lying refraining from slander also lying and i think deceiving is kind of deceiving or changing mind is bit different is not not easy at all not lying at all not easy not easy at all particularly this day for example you are celebrating your birthday right somebody uh, bring gift which you really don't like <laughs> hey, happy birthday they give you of a gift when you open the thing you appear which you really don't like what you have to say i really like it thank you so much <laughs> are we lying or not kind of lying because we don't want to hurt the person who offer a gift right still kind of lying yes not easy or at all in not lying so here lying is particularly not is particular one which is for example this day there are mainly so many this day i can see you know even though many lay person true many uh you know master 
many times they say, oh, I have communicate, I can communicate with the Buddha, I can communicate with the Avala Shora, I can communicate with the, you know, I mean the Buddha, I have this vision, that vision, so many things. Or oh, I have a many friends who say, oh, I can communicate with the Tara. Tara said this and that, I change my, you know, um, bed, uh, like bed. Tara said this is this, I do this, this, this. These are actually not, I cannot say the person is lying. Maybe the person can communicate with the Buddhas or cannot. We don't know. But this kind of person who are lying is good for society. Right? Many people follow him or her, trust him or her. They do all the things. If particular you know, like a person, a Buddhist, if the person lying, this kind of lying is actually lying. Lying, right? Lying. The second is a slander. You know, making disharmonies between, you know, two person, three person, four person is, is very common. Again, after you make a you know slender between slender between two person, what you can gain? You feel happy. You happy? Oh, their friend. I don't like. He be friend with the person. You you make a lot of gossip. Then you you know separate these two person. What you can gain? You feel happy. That's it. So these are one of the bad speech. The harsh speech is so very harmful. These days, there are so many people who still directly can say, oh, oh, you should not do, do this, you should do this, right? You can say directly. But they use very, you know, nice words. But it's more, you know, harmful than the say directly, do and do not. Harsh word. Also, particularly we are, when we are get, you know, very angry, we throw all the bad words. Refining from the frivolous speech, you know, meaningful chit-chatting. Yes, these days, particularly due to the, the net, you know, internet era, all the meaningful chit-chat there. Also meaningful thing we have been doing. For example, when you order food, you take a photo, post on your Facebook, WhatsApp, what reason? <laughs> no reason. <laughs> also, you are charging, hey, what did you have for breakfast, lunch, dinner, where you did you go? All these are actually meaningless. Instead of doing this chit chat, you just do recitation is better. Right speech. The number four, the right action. Refining from taking life. Refining from taking what is not given. Refining from sexual misconduct. That is called a right action. Refining from taking life is one of the at fault path. Right, at fault path. Therefore, according to Chinese Buddhist tradition, the monks and nuns you know, not allowed to eat meat, you know, like a non veg food. Because actually, directly or indirectly, we are taking somebody's life. That means directly you should not kill. If somebody is going to kill, if there's a way, you can stop. If there's no way, let them kill. There's an interesting story. I heard one of the uh, People, one of the uh, you know, group of the people from one, one of the center, group of people, one of the center, they are going go to, they went for pilgrimage in India. On the way, they saw, I think, uh, a few Indian people put, you know, a few cows on the truck, bring before the slot, right? Slot, right? Huh? Or kill, slaughter, he realized. They stop their car and stop the truck. Say, you're not supposed to kill. Killing is bad. A lot of argument. There's a lot of fighting. 
This thing, what we can do, we generate love and compassion, do recitation, chanting for the animal. Also, we do, you know, generate compassion and recitation for the people who are being the slaughtered. We just cannot stop on the road. It makes a lot of problem, right? If there's a way, you can stop. If there's no way, just be, you know, silent. Refining from the taking what is not given. Yeah, this I think very easy. Most of we you know, have been doing this practice. Refining from sexual misconduct. This is called the right action. So if you be practice the, the right action is good for us, is good for others. The next, the right, the livelihood. Here among the Aryan disabled having give up the wrong livelihood. Keep him set by the right livelihood. Tibetan we say right me yang takpa livelihood sowa. It about the food, it about the clothes, it about the place. You have to be the right food or right drink, clothes, whatever. For example, what, what, what's the opposite of the, the right livelihood? Maybe the wrong livelihood, right? For example, you know, eating food. For example, I have $10 in my pocket. We already, have, each of us has a $10 in our pocket. So we need to buy lunch. You don't want to spend your ten dollar. You are putting to your friends. You forgot bring money in in a wallet. You forgot. You put, put you put in. I don't have money. Let your friend buy lunch for you. Is the wrong livelihood. If you have, you just buy. You don't have. The owners tell I don't have money. Right, and you know, clothes whatever. Then also somehow. You already have a phone. You need second phone. You need another phone. Right? You, you already have a phone. Then somehow you have a craving to have a second phone. Then you realize your friend has a you know extra mobile not using anymore. Then you approach to the, your friend, you say, Oh, oh that blah 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 blah. And then you say, Oh. I need to go to like a, you know, what do you call this, uh, the place name, Sydney, uh, Sydney Square, to repair, fixing my phone. You are feeling different as what, what's wrong with your phone? You can say somehow my phone is not working. You, you're really asking, I need your phone. You cannot say I need, you just pretend you have problem. Then you, your friends, oh, no, 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 you no need to go. I have extra, phone. you can use it. You got the phone. Also, is a the right opposite of the right livelihood is a wrong livelihood, which is you get through your deceived mind is a wrong livelihood, and also is very common in the uh, I think common all over the world, so particularly you know in the Tibetan society. For example, we know the person has a good resources, we can get some donation, we can get something, but we invite them for as a kind of uh, good breakfast dinner, right? We are not offering the dinner as a friend, we, but motivation, we thought we're going to get, you know, motivation is for receiving donation. They offer a good lunch breakfast. Finally, you know, the person give donation. The donation also, you know, the wrong, received through the wrong livelihood, right? Then Top Gijal was Nyebetsova, Sovetsova, yeah, this kind of thing we should not do. Then the next one, refining from the, oh sorry, uh, refining from the sexual misconduct. This is, I think, if you have, uh, if you are married, person. You just stay with your wife and husband until you fully divorce. 
if you are not married person the best you choice you know one person who can have a, a relationship not really you know having different kind of things not good in generally generally is up to you right we cannot say much this one and well, then rat right, lobhut the rat right effort here monks monk process his will make an effort stirred up energy extract his mind and stir to prevent the arising from un un arising evil un unwholesome mental state symbol here it saying we need to effort in the true kind of field one if we realize somehow the negative thoughts already arise we need to put effort not continuously arising also we already realize i already engage into negative action also put effort not continuously engage into negative action bad things also you will realize yeah somehow i'm not really engaging in negative action uh, somehow all the negative thoughts are not arising the put effort not them arise again and again that mean put effort to stop not going to you know come again for the negative side for the positive side when you realize so oh, somehow this time i have a positive thoughts positive thinking and put effort the positive thinking keep continuously arise you know keep continuously arise maintain the positive thoughts and you realize at this moment my mind is very neutral neither positive nor negative very neutral then put effort to generate positive mind put effort to continuously arise the positive thoughts effort right then is you can apply with uh the air for arya path then the um, the right mindfulness among a boys contemplating body as a body adent clearly aware the mindfulness having put aside hankar and fettering for wall he about contemplating the feeling as a feeling he about contemplating man as a mind he about contemplating man object as a man object adren clearly awareness aware and the mindfulness having put aside hankering fettering for wall this is called right minds or so mindfulness the right concentration what are the differences between mindfulness and concentration many people mix up you know mindfulness and concentration and dependent what concentration mean tingenzin you know a mid era single pointed minds meditation concentration is same mindfulness is kind of you know the mind which is always to remember my mind is now concentrated meditating on something for example let's we all together meditate on impermanence right? everybody meditating on impermanence particularly meditating on the death that moment corner of the mind or one of the mind need to remember right now my mind is meditating on impermanence always remember then the mind can meditate on in non on impermanent continuously this is the mindfulness need to remember you for example when you walk around you there's a mindful the step you know mindful certain thing mean you need to remember what you are doing right now right now we are meditating on impermanence just remember one mind mindful 
towards the meditative mind, mindfulness. Then third factor important is alertness, alertness, right? Mean, make sure the mind is fully you know, concentrated or meditated on impermanence, not the uh, true optical going to arise or arise. Excitement, when the excitement arises, the alertness mind must, must alight, must notice that alertness. That means the general mind, the principal mind, meditate on impermanence. The mindfulness always mindful, the principal mind is meditating on impermanent. Then the awareness or alertness, the mind must aware when the excitement arise. Or the, the, the awareness or the alertness mind must aware when the excitement already disturb the meditative mind. This means the mind is in the center, focusing on impermanence. Then side by side, there's two different minds. One is the mindfulness. Man, always remember that this mind is meditated on impermanence. When the mind is, you know, slept or, you know, or the chosen object, then the mindfulness must remember, again, bring back. On the other side, the awareness mind, the alertness mind is there, is ready to aware something happened. That means your mind is the center, and the true side you put, you know, very powerful sensor. Sensor. Mean when the mind forget the object of meditation, the mindfulness must remember. When the meditative mind distracted by excitement. Then what is the next for excitement? I mean, the excitement, Goppa. Is it laxity, Geshela? No, laxity, yeah, very good. Laxity, excitement. When the mind is distracted by laxity, then the alertness must remember. Okay? Number one, your mindfulness. Mean the man fullness as a kind of one of the sensor. The awareness, alertness is another sensor. Two sensor has a different function, different kind of job. The mindfulness has a job to always remember the man is fully need to meditate on impermanence, not something else. When the mind is still meditating on impermanence, meditating on emptiness, the mindfulness must remember one sensor on the one side. Then the second sensor is the awareness or alertness. The Tibetan we saw Shejin mean need to know Shejin. Tempa is a mindfulness. Tempa mindfulness, shejin is alertness, awareness. That awareness and alertness need, need, to, need to realize when the legs T arise, going to arise, already arise. Excitement already arise, going to arise, ready to arise. These are have to known by the awareness. We cannot, many people say, I cannot do meditation because we, we are lacking the two powerful minds. One is the mindfulness, second is the awareness, right? For example, I have a two person, I just need to watch to the restaurant. I just need to watch to the restaurant. I watch, 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 watch. Instead of watching, I'm watching to the next door. Then he say, hey, right? you are disturbed. 
you're supposed to watch the restaurant and you are watching next door. Go back and watch again the mindfulness job. Then I'm still, you know, continuously watching the door, watching the door on the door, but my mind is not so clear. I cannot see the door very clearly. That means the laxity arise. My mind become very dim. My mind become the, the you know the strength become loose. Mean laxity. Then yes, my mind is I can see very clearly the door. Not only door, I can see the person in the restaurant. Again, exact man. My mind is exact. You know, for the person, not only the door. I suppose to watch only the door. Not the person in the restaurant, not the food in the restaurant. Clear? So meditation, you do this way. Just chosen your object, you know, uh, concentrate on the chosen object. Make sure the mind, uh, the mind is continuously concentrated on the chosen object. Something, you know, uh, happen, then the mindfulness must push, continuously push, continuous push, you know, concentrate. You know, the excitement come, awareness must aware. Lexity come, the awareness must aware. Very simple. So when we do meditation, we just fully you try to focus on the chosen object, which is good. We are lacking the two important minds. What are they? Mindfulness, alertness, or awareness. Uh, what is the you know job of the awareness? Need to aware when the electricity arises. Need to aware when the excitement arises. What is the job of the mindfulness? The mindfulness has a job to you know ask the man continuously mindful with the chosen object. Therefore, look at in, in traditionally all the you know ordained person have a different role. Traditionally, in China. All the, you know, the ordinary monks wear the black color, cut the hair, right? Then all the lay person wear the uh, gray color or white, uh, gray color, more gray, gray color. Also in the ancient time, they have to keep the, what they call the behind one. They keep the long hair, they cut around here. Then they keep, Hindi called the juti, juti. Ponytail, Gisela. Uh, ponytail, yeah. Why ordinary people have to wear this? Lay person wear this. King must wear this. You know, other days. Why? People very easy to recognize. Oh, this must be ordinary person. This must be a king. This must be servant. Right. Number one. Number two. When you wear the you know uh, ordinary uh, cloth or robe. It's always remind you, you are a monk, you are a nun. For example, you, you must have a habit to carry mala. Not a mala, okay, mala. <laughs> mala. Put, put your, your back or put you know, your hand. When you have mala, when you touch, it reminds you recitation. Recitation, right? Recitation. So uh, usually I carry my mala in back. So I don't wear, if the monk wear mala, and then that, oh, this monk is quite extreme monk, right? extreme monk. So these are the reason why we have to wear the robe is remembering, remembering I'm a monk, right? Same thing, the mindfulness always need to remain the mind. You need to focus on the, your the chosen object, not some, anything else, right? remembering. Therefore, we should not think mindfulness and the you know concept, you know the uh, meditation meditation are same. That means general mind, the principal mind, meditate or on the chosen object. Then alertness and the mindfulness support continuously meditate on the chosen object. Why we cannot meditate on chosen object continuously? Too optical because the mindful is not there, then the man forget the chosen object. Or other obstacle is there's no awareness. When the obstacle aware, 
then the the we don't realize right for example you are i ask you to do a very important back you know full with the gold and diamond jewelry i ask you what's the back one minute if you dist your money disturb from the back the back has gone you know someone is ready to you know take the back someone waiting wish your money disturb from the back once you disturb the back has gone same when you are doing meditation you know the ignorance attachment anger desire just around the meditative mind asking hey is a 12 o'clock have a time for lunch the man is stuck from food right therefore you do meditation remember the this uh, three important minds that you can just you know read more books about meditation the book the book must be very authentic one not you you know all books are good okay so today is the last class of the or mindfulness through in our discussion i hope you gain little knowledge which is can be useful for the future kishila yeah. yes usually as an auspicious the last lessons you will uh, the master will read from the beginning to indicate a uh, continue of study why is this tradition coming along can you so, explain last last day usually on the last day of the teaching the teacher will read from the beginning again to create a auspiciousness oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. of continuous study is that a common practice everywhere and what's the significance this is i think i don't know in other tradition in tibetan tradition yes for example uh, somebody invited me in their home to read the prajana paramita uh, uh, the textbook in you know, a teaching so i start from beginning and the end you know in the evening the, at the end i need to read you know i must read few pages few lines from the beginning that's mean is a kind of a, a special sign you know the family i can read again and again the teaching also when uh, someone give initiation and uh, sorry uh, uh, the transformation right the teaching transformation after finish the transformation they read from the beginning of the page for few line a few center kind of a special sign we can continuously able to read the teaching is a kind of tibetan tradition yeah so Any question geshela, so with that geshela may we request you to have this auspiciousness with us uh uh autobuche <laughs> sorry because i always be in tbc as a resident teacher not the resident guru i'm not giving you know i haven't give the full kind of teaching about the for uh, for mindfulness uh, i never feel i never accept be a guru in tbc i'm very happy to be teacher you should not think any of you should not think i'm a, your guru i i don't have the qualification to be guru okay in the future if i give a teaching as a guru that i will do also next sin next sunday we will have a yamantaka uh, sadhana's explanation explanation on the yamantaka sadhana also why i choose to teach the yamantaka sadhana because i knew many of singaporean who you know attach with the uh, tibetan buddhist and not this tibetan that they you know like buddhist center many of them receive initiations yamanda initiation go many initiation i think more you got more initiation than me right then but i know this they do the sadhana in daily life like every day they do sadhana they jabra bara 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 finish i feel is bit you know pity for them they don't know i'm not seeing 100 percent them many of them they really don't know how to do the proper sadhana practice i'm giving more you know awareness 
to do the proper way of doing sadhana, then the person can benefit. Otherwise, doing Yamendaka's, you know, uh, sadhana or doing, you know, 100 times reciting Mala Mantra, you cannot feel different. You see, oh, if I finish Yamendaka sadhana, I finish 100, you know, syllable uh, recitation, finish, 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 finish. You cannot feel the differences before have done the sadhana, before do the sadhana, after have done the sadhana. If you are very serious, if you are very, you know, doing the proper way, Yamendaka sadhana, every day after you have done, you feel different feeling. Also, for you, quite easy to overcome any kinds of obstacle, the inner, external, you know, any kinds of obstacle around you, you will be able to overcome. And make sure whoever going to attend the Yamendaka Sadhana, I will teach in the common explanation, not the explanation I, uh, we thought, you know, uh, some of the explanation I cannot explain to you, particularly, you know, the fact, how to practice, develop your wisdom, how to protect the uh, person who has a lot of obstacle. Also, there's very, you know, different kinds of practice must be there, but I'm not going to explain everything, but I explain the general explanation to you. Therefore, even though I will explain the Yamantaka Sadhana, not be as a guru, be as a teacher, right? Okay, now it's almost 11.30. We can have a few questions, then we can stop. Any question? No more, right? Like permanent by nature or something that is non-existent, we do. How do we negate such an such an object? Sorry, can you ask the question more clearly? Oh, oh no! Just now I heard uh, the sharing on permanent, permanent uh, by permanent objects. Uh, uh, I mean, based on the Vibhaska school, uh, the lower vehicle school, so how do we negate an object that is permanent by nature or we don't negate? According to them, they not negate the uh, permanent in the nature because they accept all conditions phenomena permanent. All oh. phenomena are not necessary. Uh, I think uh, synonymous, permanent phenomena and condition phenomena synonymous. Also, other school, there's a space is permanent, right? Not the condition phenomena. For them, even the space is the condition phenomena. Uh, then they're not going to negate the, the permanent phenomena based on the condition phenomena because all the condition phenomena are permanent. Okay, thank you. Okay, based on the school, we, okay, thank you. <laughs> Okay, so no question, then we stop our class today here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, this and mind, today, for the first time, we'll be listening. So, example, when Generally, in uh, in uh, the Buddhist term, we talk about man and mental factors. Man and mental factors. Tibetan we say sem in mind, sem jung mean mental factors. The two minds cannot arise simultaneously. For example, when you think this is a cup, the second you can think this is a spoon. When you think this is a cup, at the same time, you cannot think this is a spoon. Right? Cannot, the mind cannot arise, two minds, two different minds cannot arise simultaneously. But the mental factor can arise simultaneously, four, five, six, ten together. For example, there's a ten virtues mental factor. Right? There's a five un universal mental factor. One man always surrounded by the five mental factors. Yes, there's alertness. 
or mindfulness are the, not the principal mind, these are the mental factor. They can arise simultaneously or sometimes the uh, mindfulness arise, not necessarily the leader awareness arise. Therefore, when we do meditation, we cannot, uh, we cannot notice the excitement arise because the awareness mind is not there. Therefore, with the intention, we need to awake or we need to generate the two minds. That uh, is not come naturally. Okay. Okay. So now it's will be one. I will stop our class today here.